Now we're going to see an application of the probability uh, for a macroscopic system. So a macroscopic system uh, contains many particles. A macroscopic system could be, for example, uh, an ideal gas. Let's say that it has capital N molecules. It could be a spin system, capital N spins, etc. So there, there are many examples that we give. Now, in order to solve uh, for this system um, quantum mechanically, it's basically quantum mechanics is already based on uh, probabilistic arguments so it's intrinsically impossible to make deterministic predictions about these systems intrinsically impossible to make deterministic predictions and now we can use classical mechanics classical mechanics you have to know the positions velocities of all the particles in the system all the forces acting on these particles in order to uh, know whether or not they will be on the left or on the right or where they will be at some uh, future time so it, it is very hard uh, to know all positions and velocities and remember we're talking about uh, something of the order of Avogadro's number here 10 to 23 molecules or so so this will uh, mean we will have very complex uh, calculations and that would require uh, some supercomputers in order to to make a prediction so this is very costly very time consuming and uh, almost impossible to do if you have so many particles in the system on the other hand statistical mechanics uh, tells us you can form an ensemble so that's the recipe that's given to us you can form an ensemble of n funny n uh, similar systems and predict the probability of a certain outcome R a particular outcome R at time T okay so for systems of many particles macroscopic systems uh, it's quite obvious that uh, we cannot make deterministic predictions uh, using quantum mechanics. Classical mechanics, it's very difficult to make a prediction because you have so many particles. You have to know all the positions and velocities and the forces acting on these particles in order to calculate where they will be after a certain time. Uh, statistical mechanics says you can form an ensemble of uh, similar systems and similar systems uh, and uh, as n goes to infinity you will get a better answer and you can uh, do the experiment and basically see uh, what is the relative frequency of the occurrence of an uh, outcome and that will give you the probability at a certain time t of the outcome now if we find that the probability of occurrence of any particular event is independent of time then an isolated microscopic system is said to be in equilibrium this is a very important result so if the probability of 
any particular outcome r is not a function of time that is time independent uh, for an isolated macroscopic system uh, this is for any uh, particular event R then the system is said to be in equilibrium. So that's basically a definition of equilibrium uh, macro state given in terms of a probability uh, definition. Okay, so that's a very important uh, result. Now, we can demonstrate this for an ideal gas with uh, capital N molecules. So let's say that I have an ideal gas with N molecules, as an example. And let's say that there was a partition between the left side and right hand side at t is equal to zero. I removed this partition and all the molecules were trapped on the left hand side at t is equal to zero. And this is something we have discussed before. The molecules will diffuse to the right hand side and at equilibrium we will have a random configuration. Uh, all the molecules will be evenly distributed or more or less a uniform distribution will be achieved uh, throughout this box. Okay, so let's say that this is the situation uh, at t is equal to zero, and this is the situation as t goes to infinity. All right, now I call p, uh, which can be a function of time t, the probability at time t of a molecule being on the left, on the left side. And q of t is the probability at time t of a molecule being on the right side okay uh, now with this definition what is the probability at t is equal to p at t is equal to zero so if i pick a molecule what is the probability that it is on the left side so probability p at t is equal to zero well, at t is equal to zero, all the molecules are on the left side. Uh, so it's going to be one. And the probability of finding it on the right side is going to be zero. Uh, now, what will be the probability of finding the molecule on the left side as t goes to infinity? Well, since the molecules will be evenly distributed, this is the equilibrium situation, uh, there is no preference for the left side and right side, so the probability at t goes to infinity p and q will be equal. They will be equal to one half, that is equilibrium and why does this happen? We have a random uniform distribution. There is no preference of sides, right hand side and left hand side, they are equally probable. And uh, if I plot probability p as a function of time, what would this look like? 
the probability p of finding a molecule on the left side. Well, at t is equal to 0, we said it's going to be 1. And at t, as t goes to infinity, it's going to be 1 over 2. So this is going to die out, and then it will saturate. So you know the time scale for this to die out is the relaxation time, tau r. That is my relaxation time. And for t uh, much greater than tau r, p becomes time independent. Actually, p is equal to 1 over 2, a constant. So it's not time dependent. So what does that tell me? That means the probability of this event has become time independent. If the probability of uh, having any event become becoming time independent uh, for an isolated macroscopic system, then the system is said to be in equilibrium. Uh, so we lose the time dependence of this probability. Well, let's define another probability uh, as an example. So let's do that here. Um, so let's call this probability P and T is probability of having lowercase letter m molecules on the left at time t. Okay, so that's the probability I'm talking about. Then I ask myself, what is the probability of having all the molecules on the left at time t is equal to zero? It is one. And furthermore, I can say that probability of having n molecules on the left hand side uh, at t is equal to zero. is equal to zero for n is not equal to n. Because if you have n molecules on the left side, n minus, a capital N minus n molecules should be on the right side. And since that is not possible, uh, the, the probability of having uh, no molecules on the right side at t is equal to zero is one. So these two statements are equivalent. Or the probability of having all molecules on the right side is zero. In fact, the probability of having and molecules on the right side is uh, zero if n is not equal to zero. So for n greater than zero, at time t is equal to zero, there will be no uh, molecules on the right hand side. Okay. Um, so basically I find that uh, as t goes to infinity, the probabilities become uh, time independent. Um, and that's basically defining my equilibrium uh, situation. So uh, for probability of having n molecules on the left at time t, uh, this is going to require a little bit more thought uh, about how to find this probability but at equilibrium that will also become time independent so we will see that uh, later on all right so uh, what we have done here is basically we went through uh, the probability arguments for a system with many particles a macroscopic system for example ideal gas with capital n molecules or an ideal spin system with capital N spins. 
for these systems we have three possible options we have uh, quantum mechanics, we have classical mechanics and statistical mechanics. Quantum mechanics intrinsically impossible to make deterministic predictions. It's already using probabilities, probabilistic results. Uh, classical mechanics is hard to know all positions, velocities, and it requires very complex calculations to make a prediction. But this is also true for quantum mechanics for a many particle system. For statistical mechanics, we can form an ensemble of uh, and similar systems and predict the probability of a particular outcome at a certain time t. If we find that at a certain time t, uh, or after a certain time, the probability has become time independent for a particular outcome, then the system is going to be in equilibrium. Uh, we have seen an application for an ideal gas with n molecules. Uh, the molecules were trapped on the left side at t is equal to zero. Then this partition was removed. So I, I applied the force, the partition was removed. Uh, then I find that as t goes to infinity, the particles will diffuse to the right hand side. And at equilibrium, I will have the most uniform random distribution. If I call P the probability at time T of a molecule being on the left, that probability at T is equal to zero is one because all of them are on the left and Q the probability at time T of a molecule being on the right at T is equal to zero is zero. As T goes to infinity, these probabilities approach each other. They become one half at equilibrium for the most random and uniform distribution because there is no preference for the right side or the left side. And if you plot P of T as a function of T, you find that it's going to die out from one to one over two uh, in a certain time scale we call the relaxation time. And after the relaxation time, the probability becomes time independent. It's a constant one half. So that is basically what we talked about here. That is an equilibrium situation. Now I can ask a similar question for what is the probability of having n molecules on the left at time t? Well, at time t is equal to zero, when n is equal to capital N, the probability is one because all of them are on the left hand side and the probability of having no molecules on the right side is also one. Probability of having n molecules on the right side is zero. Actually, probability of having lowercase letter n molecules on the right side at t is equal to zero if that n is not equal to zero. So uh, what, what is the prob this probability p of n t as t goes to infinity? Does it become also time independent? The answer is yes. Uh, for that we have to talk about binomial distribution to calculate exactly what this probability will be at equilibrium.